Welcome back to another episode of the Succeed Against the Odds show. My guest today is Dorothea Hendricks. Ta -da! Ta -da! <laughs> now, I always say all my, all my guests are special guests, and, and you are a special guest in a whole new special way. Aww. Because typically I have guests on the show that are acquaintances or people want to be on the show, but with you, I have actually worked with you. Yes and you have been my speech coach. Yes. So Dorothea, uh, I'm, I'm, Dorothea has no idea what I'm gonna ask her. So <laughs> no, I don't. She's, she's like, what are we doing? Like, look, just trust me. So here we go. Why am I doing this? Yeah, why are yes, you doing yeah. this? Because you're wonderful, but we're yeah. gonna get to that in a minute. Okay. Um, I wanna ask you how long, is a speech coach, is that the actual d the description of what you do? What is it exactly that you do? What is the actual definition of what you do? What I do actually is I'm a trainer. I, I train in presentation skills and public speaking and controlling your emotions when you're on stage, you know, reducing yourself, building confidence. That is what I do. And in that job as a trainer, there are times when people ask me, you know, would you coach me? Would you help me with a presentation? Would you help me with a speech? And so that's how I became a public speaking presentation skills coach, and I ended up coaching you. Okay, so now let's backtrack. Yes. How did this this whole journey and the whole public speaking and training begin? What got you into this in the first place? That's a long story. I'll try to be short. A lot of people, they talk about finding their passion. This is the whole thing about finding your passion. and. I could never find my passion and I thought, how stupid, don't ask me what my purpose is, I don't know, right? But in the last few years, I've begun to realize that my purpose, my, my, what would develop into a passion of mine started many years ago. When I graduated from school, I didn't know what I wanted to be. So my mother said, you're going to be a teacher. Oh, okay, so I went to school, I went through to be a teacher and I got into the classroom and I found after two, three years, I didn't really care for the classroom. I was really shy, lacking in confidence. And so standing with these children, you know, looking at me, even though I was teaching, I didn't feel all that comfortable. So then I moved into the private sector. Now this has been a pattern of mine. I'd move into the private sector, come back into teaching, move into the private sector, come back into teaching. And as the years went on, I found every time I moved into the private sector, I'd get into a job that involved me talking, speaking, presenting, doing sales, event planning. And so more and more I was moved out of my comfort zone. Then I was going through a relationship challenge and my doctor at the time said to me, you know what, you need to build up your confidence. You're, you're out there, but you don't have any confidence. And I suggest you join Toastmasters. So I did. And as I joined Toastmasters, I did develop my confidence, even though I thought he was wrong, I thought he was way off the mark, he actually was correct. And my mother was correct in actually suggesting I go into teaching, because everything that I've been doing all these years has actually revolved around speaking, presenting, training, helping people in their own speaking, which has actually helped me in my own journey. So I now have found in a roundabout way something that I'm passionate about, I'm enthusiastic about, and it was staring me in the face all along, except I kept saying, no, that's not me, it's not me, but it actually turned out to be me. So there's a lesson there, because sometimes we are resistant to something. Yes. And other people can see yes. what we can't see. Yes. So, and it can be kind of counterintuitive, because sometimes people tell us that we should be doing something that we really should not be doing, and it's really not us, but sometimes they're right. So it's mm -hmm. always good to give it that benefit of the doubt and try it. I think so. Yeah. I, I think you, you have to go ahead. You can't just say, I mean, with teaching, it was interesting. I didn't want to do it. I said, because I was so shy and an introvert that this wasn't for me, but it actually was the vehicle that pulled me out of myself, and I began to see that it was a vehicle for me to actually help others it's, it was just an interesting, it's an interesting experience. So in this case, I could say, listen to your mother. And my mother was right. Okay. Mom was right. And, 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 <laughs> and you're right. It is kind of you know, counterintuitive. Yeah. But it's a self-discovery. Uh, you know, even when you don't want to do something, and I, I'm going to say when we don't want to do something, there's a line that somebody told me or I read somewhere about do something that leads you toward, if there's a tough decision, you, it leads you toward love or something of that nature, positivity. So it's always going to be a benefit. And even if we feel we don't want to do that, 
if it takes us in that direction, even if we're kicking and screaming, we've got to try it because you don't know what will be at the other end, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good advice. Yeah. Now, you were my coach. Yes. For, for a talk that I did recently. Yes, and, and a fantastic talk. She was amazing. Only amazing. because of you. I give you a lot of credit. I know I've spoken before and all that stuff, but I, the process that I went through with you was so incredible. Because I, I, I've done a lot of many talks. I've done many talks before, so mm -hmm. it wasn't the first time on stage. I'm comfortable with the stage, and I don't have a problem talking about what I want to talk about. However, Confidence. with Confidence. ADHD <laughs> that I have, <laughs> and for the type of uh, presentation that I have yeah. to do, for the type of uh, speech that I had to give, it was very important mm -hmm. and imperative that my, that my talk was on point and from every angle. Mm -hmm. And I had a big topic that I needed to, er to narrow down, and I had a really uh, challenging time with that and you remember when we when we met uh, more than yes. once at the beginning yes. <laughs> yes. you kept uh, you know we, you know you would get me to share my ideas of what it is I wanted to um, bring into light mm. and then I would have all these ideas and then you would just bring me back to one mm. point because I only had 12 minutes to to do this presentation <laughs> and you were so good with me in that because typically I would get frustrated with somebody doing that with me. Mm. And, and I would easily walk out the door. I can just tell you that right now, so she doesn't know this, but this is <laughs> true. Uh, I would get impatient with, with people who would just not listen to me and say, no, it's my way, yes. and, because I would get frustrated. But you have a way about you, and I think that was my instinct when I first met you. That's why I ended up hiring you and, and, and choosing you to, to be my coach. I felt in my gut that you would be somehow that you would have a way with me, and you did. So kudos to you, because I'm not an easy person <laughs> to, <laughs> to coach. <laughs> I always, I, I admit it, you know, a lot of times I feel like my way is the right way, and you helped me see without, and not make me feel like my way was the right way. I felt comfortable mm. with your expertise and your guidance. Um, and that speaks volumes to what you do. Mm. And I had not shared that with you before because no, I I'm wanted this on the record yeah. so that you know people who, who are learning about you, uh, who may not know you, know my personal experience with you. I, I was resistant to even having a coach in the first place. I'm like, I don't need a coach. You know, I'm, you well, know because I've done you, speaking. You, I've done this before. That's I know, right. I know how to structure yeah. speech. But you... Uh, you were amazing. So I want to publicly thank you oh, for thank you. Uh, for being that gentle guidance and at the same time firm and really helping me stay on track and, and bringing me back to that one point all along. So, oh, well, I, I, I don't really know what to say. I, I really thank you. Thank you, Francesca. It, you were a joy to work with. I, uh, I know that when we first met, I, kind of, I wondered to myself, because you had mountains and mountains and mountains of material, and it was just like, oh my gosh, and you had, and we had this material, all of it was amazing material, but you can, in 12 minutes, you can only focus on one thing, and yet you want to focus on that one thing that's going to have maximum impact, and to search and find out what that is and hone in on that but I, I'm going to say I may have been there as the guide but you actually are the one who took the information and you made it into something. Which is part of what coaching really should be like, right? Mm -hmm. Like a coaching mm -hmm. client mm -hmm. relationship. Is that, I mean, I do the same thing with my clients, right? Mm -hmm. So it needs to be that, yes. but it's, it's tougher to be on the other end, <laughs> on, the <receiving, laughs> on the receiving end. But it, that, that is it. Yes. Um, I don't know, you made me feel very comfortable. So yes, I did have a, a, a crazy amount of information. I remember you saying many times, you got books here. <laughs> you, oh, you do, you do. And, and, and this is the one thing I'll say to anybody who's got lots, is even though we don't use, you can't in the end for 12 minutes, use all that. Mm. What you can do is save it, and you've got multiple speeches and multiple material, bits and pieces of material here to use for a book, to use for anything. The idea here, when you've got a presentation, you know, what's your core message? How are you going to make sure that that core message 
that thread stays from beginning to end and you deliver it in a way that when people get up and they walk out that door, they know what your message was. And the other thing that I'll say here is I heard people and afterwards in the comments from the Get Inspired Talks, by the way, that the comments that Roger had is your name was mentioned more than once, mm. numerous times about being somebody who had an impact, mm. right? When we're talking about domestic violence and emotional abuse, which is a very- That is what I talked about on my, yeah. on my, on and, my talk. And that is, that's a painful subject and it's, it's a serious subject and it, it's not a subject that actually people can take lightly, but yet what you did and the drama that you created and how you presented yourself you had some moments of lightness and laughter and then you took pe people on a journey and yes i may have been the guide i may have said stay focused stay focused keep to the point what is it you want people to walk away with and bring you back but in the end you were the one that actually took the material and made it into your own and made it alive and that's what you want a speaker to do that coach is there to guide and to help and to nurture and kind of like you know you're corralling a little pony here a little puppy dog whatever but in the end it's that 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 pony that's going to take the prize because of how they take that material and take it to the end and the that's trainer has a lot to do with it anyway mm, the anyway. trainer has a lot to do with it i'm just going to backtrack yes. here a little bit on what you said because that was actually the key point that was a turning point for me because i had all this material i came into wanting to deliver uh, a presentation or a speech where I wanted to address many areas because they all kind of yeah. come together and you kept telling me to come back to that one point. But w it was the fact that you said you have so much, you can use those for other speeches. That was the little switch for me yes. that made me realize I don't have to put them all in one speech. I can, I can still deliver my message. Yes one bite at a time yeah and actually that was probably like <laughs> maybe for you it's not but for me it was and yeah. and I think it's very yeah. important so um, you guys watching if you know if you're into already public speaking or if you're thinking about public speaking that is if you can take anything out of this of this video and this interview is that to stay on that one thread Stay like on you the said, one and just yeah. stay all the way through it without going all over the place, very uh, focused. Honestly, I feel like I, I, it would not have been the same speech without your guidance. Um, yes, I would have delivered a speech, it would have been a speech. But I think it was as powerful as it was because of the way you helped me. Well, thank it's you. just the way it is. Okay. It's just the well, way it is. I, so. I, 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 thanks very much. You're very welcome. I'm going to say it's, it's a two way. It's a two way street. It's a two way street. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because the the person that you're coaching has to. When you had that epiphany, that aha, ah, I don't have to tell everything, and that is key. If you hadn't had that, I mean, who knows where our relationship would have gone, right? Because people often want to. I know this. I've got so much I want to share, and they want to put it into a little package, but. People can only absorb so much. That's true. And the, the more clear, we, the simpler we are, the more clear we can be, the more focused we can be. And we can, we've got countless examples. You had so many examples. And then even your drama, the way you opened up, you know, that just added to the one point that made it memorable. When you've got too much, what are people going to remember, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I, but I, I want to say, I, I really thank you. I enjoyed working with you. I did Francesca too. is a delight. To work with and her material and to support her I just I encourage everyone to continue watching other you know videos other podcasts you know take get involved in her shimmy mob which is a whole other story oh, that's here, a whole but, other story but, that, but that's a whole other thing yeah I just I, I just really uh, thank you thank you for this well I have a lot of respect for you so thank you back um, Dorothea where can our audience reach you if they want to know more about you and hire you Hire her. <laughs> She's amazing. And if uh, you're not in the area, fly her in yeah. or fly in because she's worth it. Oh, well, thank you. They can access me, um, check my website out, uh, which is now in the process of being revamped, but you probably can still access it at www.artofspeakingforsuccess. The link is in the comments. Yeah. And uh, my email address is Dorothea at DorotheaHendricks.com or you can give me a call at 604-254. 4308. Thanks a lot, Francesca. Beautiful. Yes. So, do you want to, is there anything you'd like to tell our audience before we go? 
any words of wisdom, whether it's anything on speaking or anything? I really feel strongly that in our lives, the one thing that is a constant, like death and taxes, somebody said death and taxes, <laughs> is communication is everything. If we can't express our ideas, express what we feel to another person, then we're going to have a very challenging life. It will be not happy and unfulfilled. And so I think whether if you find yourself going out to speak in front of a group of people or do sales or just in your ordinary everyday family relationship situations, to be an effective communicator is key. And at the core of being an effective communicator is confidence. Confidence is the key to being an effective communicator in whatever way. If you do it through a coach, someone like me, if you join Toastmasters, if you do it through counseling, if you do it through volunteering and helping other, other people, I'm going to say that that is absolutely critical for anyone to really make sure that they're living a full life and you can't find your purpose and follow your purpose without being a confident and effective communicator. So if you're feeling you need to build a bit of confidence or you think even you might have enough confidence, I'm going to say at this stage in my life, I've come to realize you can never have enough confidence. Never be comfortable and confident, confident enough to think that every time you say something, people fully understand. Because there's always a question mark anytime we communicate. We all live in our own heads. We all hear things a certain way. So our goal is to make sure that when we do say something, the majority of the people hear it the way we intended it to be heard and understood the way we intended it to be understood so that they can act or do something with what we're telling them. And I think that's it in a roundabout way. So thank you, Francesca. You're welcome. So sorry, now I have another question. Yes. Because that's, it's my show, so I can do whatever I want. Yes. We don't have to wrap up now. Um, what would you say to someone who's terrified at the thought of speaking? It's like, yeah, yeah, I know it builds um, confidence. Mm -hmm. How can you make yourself take that step through that fear of getting up there and actually doing it? That's not an easy answer. Uh, you know, if I could say just go do it, take the step. And, and I'm going to say that on one hand, it's just to force yourself. It may not appear this way to anybody watching or even to you, but I am an introvert to the core, an absolute introvert to the core. I was super shy, which is another reason I didn't want to go into teaching. And I have shied away from speaking. Somehow I get pulled into it. And I, that's where I am now. But I, I will say in terms of for myself, when I go out to do training and workshops, I love working with the people that I work with anytime I, I go into a session and I, I'm training. However, when I'm finished, I revert back to being shy. I go home, I put myself in a corner, and I need to recoup. It's easy to stay in that corner. And I guess I'm going to, for anyone who's super, super shy, like I was, eventually I was put in the position where I had to. I, I was actually forced to go out. Sometimes people aren't put into a position where they're forced to go out. So then I'm going to ask that if you are one of those people where you go, I'm super shy, I don't need to public speak, I don't ever want to stand up in front of anyone and ever say anything, I have my job, I keep my nose down, and I move through my life. And if you're happy with that, if you can actually say that, yes, I'm happy with that, and in my relationships, I have a good understanding and a good back and forth with my partners, my spouse, my family, then maybe that's fine. However, confidence is at the core of everything we do. If you are in a meeting and you are irritated because you haven't expressed yourself properly, or you haven't stood up and expressed yourself, or had an idea that you didn't share, and somebody else has shared it, and they're getting kudos or recommendations, and you leave that meeting and going, well, I had the same idea. I just didn't bother saying it. And then you find you're not being recognized or getting the promotions or some of these other things that happen. It is because you haven't taken that step to put yourself out there. And it's just a key critical step. And it happens when we're ready. Sometimes it happens when we're not ready, but we need to do it. And I'm just gonna share this story from a, a young man that I met a number of years ago who trained as a lawyer, got into a law firm, and a couple of other young people were hired at the same time he was. 
And he said, when it came to be about two or three years in, he saw that they were making inroads and they had all been, the three of them had been hired at the same time, but he, he was still kind of in the same position and regarded the same way as he was when he first came in. And he began to realize that whenever they had meetings or a senior partner would stop by and have something to say, that he was the one that never expressed himself. He said, I'm a slow thinker. Words don't come to me easily, but by the time the meeting would stop or the partner would walk away, I would have thought of something to say, but by then it was too late. So he said, I knew that if I wanted to forward my career, end up feeling better, make myself known that I had two choices. One is do nothing, have everything go the same way. The other one was to do something, and he said that's why I jo end up joining Toastmasters, mm -hmm. is to start getting myself up and being able to articulate my thoughts on a quicker basis because Toastmasters is impromptu speaking, right? So I'm not saying that people have to join Toastmasters. It's great. I think it's a great organization. You have Dale Carnegie. There are all kinds of places. Uh, or you can have coaches. But it means really what do you want out of life is the basic question to ask. If you want your life to change, to be different, then it means you have to do something, and then it means taking that step. As much as you may dread it, as much as you may be afraid, mm -hmm. all I can say is, you're not alone because there are many people who take that first step and then they are really glad that they did. I've never met anybody who's actually even crying. I actually met a girl one day crying, you know, when she was giving her speech and putting herself out. But she said, I never regret it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to go back to being who I was. Mm -hmm. I'm not, she said, the best or the fastest thinker, but she says, I now can do what I didn't do before. And what's the worst thing that can happen? That's exactly it. That's right? exactly it. That's exactly it. And I it. hear, yes. I, um, I don't remember if I read this somewhere or if I heard it somewhere, that introverts make better speakers. Oh. So there you go. If you're an introvert. <laughs> uh, Who knew? Who yeah. knew? I didn't yeah, know. Apparently, I didn't know apparently that. you yeah. did do. I, yeah. I don't remember where I, where I heard it or read it. Yeah. That's it. So there you go. Oh, well, thanks a lot, Francesca. Thank you yeah. for coming. And thanks to everybody out there for listening, too. And uh, yes. so. Make sure you to like this video, comment if you got anything good out of the video. I'm sure you did. And uh, thank you so much. Oh, it's Get my in touch pleasure. with Dorothea for any questions you have on speaking. Yeah. And uh, till next time, bye for now. All right, bye bye. Thanks. And thanks, Francesca. Thank really. You. Ah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs>